Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Vince Grassi. I'm one of our professors in the Chemical and Biomolecular Engineering Department here at Lehigh, and uh, I'm your advisor. I'm the person that you can reach out to uh, through email, um, and if necessary, we can talk by phone uh, to answer any questions that you might have about the specifics of the program, um, the curriculum, and uh, the degree, and career opportunities. What I'd like to do today is give you a very brief overview of what the program is, what the, what the nature of it is, what types of things you'll learn in the program, um, and, uh, and, and I'll take questions that you can type in. So please feel free to start typing your questions now, and we'll take those uh, when I get done with the short presentation. What I'd like to do before I actually talk about the program itself, I'd like to give you a little bit of uh, my background. I, I think it's important for you to know uh, who I am, where I'm coming from, um, since I'm your advisor, and that might help you um, know what questions you can ask me. Anyways, I uh, spent quite a bit of time in industry. I worked in industry for more than 35 years. I worked there in a wide variety of uh, capacities. I started as, a, uh, as an engineering analyst. I worked on a number of our computer control systems that we put into uh, some of our uh, uh, operating plants. These are chemical plants. I then moved into our process engineering area. I did a lot of capital projects um, and, uh, and process improvements in our plants. I spent time at our plants. Later in my career, I moved into engineering management. So I do know something about career opportunities and what it takes to get a job in industry and, and advance. Later in my career, I moved into more of our business uh, areas and our business processes. Uh, I completed my career after 35 years. I was the, uh, the director of employee development, um, which also might be of help to you too. I know something about employ employment development and, uh, and how you can really relate that to your, to your career. That's a little bit of my background of my industrial experience, um, but I, I would like to share with you something else I think might be useful. And that is, uh, when I got my graduate degrees, I did those part-time. So I did much like what you're planning on doing yourself. Now, when I did my graduate programs in chemical engineering, I did not have the advantage of distance education. When I did my programs, it was 30 years ago. And I think you all know what computer technology looked like 30 years ago. But we didn't have this type of presence that we could do virtually. Um, what I can say about the program is I found the program very enriching. It certainly helped my career. I'd be happy to talk to you if you have questions about that and how it might relate to yours. Um, so the program is very similar to what I had back then, but it's more enhanced because now you can take advantage and do it virtually. And boy, I wish I had that capability when I was a student. With that said, let me give you a background for the engineering uh, degree program in chemical engineering. As you can see on the, uh, the slide it's projected, um, most of you probably know chemical engineering is a very broad field. Uh, I'd like to look at it as it's basic science applied to building facilities and creating new products, um, making, them ver making our plants very efficient, that span everything from DNA to petroleum. So that's pretty broad. And it's broad because it's based in all those sciences. So the biological sciences, physics, chemistry, um, and nanotechnology, some electronics, all these, all these sciences are really applied in the, in the engineering discipline. What that means is it means that as a chemical engineer, um, you have the opportunity for a very broad-based career. You can basically, I don't know, you can almost do anything. I felt that when I was working in, uh, in industry, I could move around very easily to different departments and do different things. And I think you heard from my background that, uh, that I was able to move into different things. So I'm sure that as chemical engineers, there's something that will be of interest to you. You can't be interested in everything, but I'm sure there's something uh, that will be of interest to you. In terms of the career opportunities, uh, chemical engineers are very employable. Um, we have a high success rate of uh, placing our engineers, our undergraduates, as well as our graduate students in, uh, in a wide variety of, uh, of areas. Um, our students end up in academia. Should they choose that route, there are opportunities in the government um, doing basic research. And there are certainly a wide variety of opportunities in business and, and, in, uh, uh, and in industry. And those business and industry uh, um, opportunities are, are more than simply doing process design, uh, process engineering. But we have many students that end up in law, looking at uh, patent law, um, to things working in, in basic research in a wide variety of, uh, of fields. 
So that's what the program is. Let's talk about the degree requirements. So we talked about the end, what the end is in mind. Let's talk about uh, how to get there. So these are the uh, the career re the degree requirements. The master's degree is uh, is 30 credit hours. Okay, and these are credit hours at what we call our 300 to 400 level courses. Those are basically the graduate level courses. There are four key uh, core courses that are required in chemical engineering. It's thermodynamics, reaction engineering, the transport processes, which include fluid transport, heat transfer, and uh, material transfer, mass transfer, and also our mathematical methods in, uh, in chemical engineering. There are some specific requirements about the number of courses that need to be, in addition to that, need to be at the 400 level and, uh, and the electives that you can take. Needless to say, there are quite a number of, uh, of elective courses that you can take in distance, and if you have the opportunity to actually be on campus, you can take advantage of the campus courses as well. So some important qualities uh, of chemical engineers. Um, these are probably qualities you already have. These are the qualities that, uh, that we look for in our students. Certainly as chemical engineers, we need to have very good analytical skills. Chemical engineering is all about solving problems. It's all about identifying what the right problem is. It might not be presented as the right problem. You need to dig into it and find the right problem. It's about using the basic sciences and the basic technology to come up with the right approach to solve that problem and then the implementation of that problem. But it's primarily rational reasoning and analytical skills. Uh, engineering requires creativity. Um, we're trying to come up with solutions that benefit society. Sounds simple. How do you do that? We're looking for people that can be fairly creative, can define new problems, look at things that haven't been thought of before. Ingenuity is, is clearly a critical skill of engineering. Um, things don't always work right. And sometimes uh, we have to think quickly on our, on our toes to solve that problem, whether it be an upside in the laboratory or something's wrong, something's going wrong in, the, in, a, in a plant operation. Um, believe it or not, engineers do have uh, interpersonal skills. We have to work uh, closely in team environments. We have to work with people. We have to be able to influence in people. Uh, so part of the program gets into working in team environments and blogs and whatnot on our distance education website to work on interpersonal skills. I've already talked about problem solving skills. And last but not least is tenacity. I put that at the end of the list because I think that requires the most emphasis. Um, I think all of you know chemical engineering is not an easy program. It does require a lot of work. It requires a lot of work because it requires knowledge in all the basic sciences, in all the mathematical disciplines. So you have to be very forceful. You have to have a lot of tenacity to stick with the program and do it. So some of the uh, career opportunities, I've already said it. It's broad. It's from DNA to petroleum. There's opportunities for, uh, for scientific research uh, all the way to large-scale plan operation. Uh, additionally, um, some master's programs, distance or uh, on campus, sometimes they're terminal degrees and the school will not allow you to go on and get a doctorate if, uh, if, if that's something that you become interested in. That's not true here. It's not a terminal degree. It's a full-blown master's degree. But if you decide that you want to actually continue and do doctoral research, there are, there are opportunities to do that as well. And uh, here's, here's a long list. Um, I could have made the list longer, but I only had so many bullet points I could put on the slide of where the, uh, the career opportunities really are. So I'll let you read through that list and see what's on that list that might excite you. What I'm hoping you notice on the list is that careers span all the way from very scientific, very detailed technical work all the way to, uh, to more business type work or last on the list, entrepreneurship, um, even run your own business, your own company. I do want to mention that in addition to the Masters of Chemical Engineering, we also offer other master's programs. These are related to it. So we share courses between these programs, but they have a different focus. The two other programs that we have are biological chemical engineering, and that's more suited for folks that want to end up in the biotech area or the pharmaceutical area. And then a new program that we're putting together um, that we actually have courses already available for now, but it'll be a full program starting next year, is in chemical energy engineering. Uh, energy is obviously an important topic today. Um, 
our energy resources are finite, the fossil fuel resources are finite, and there's an opportunity to bring in much more renewable and alternate forms of energy, whether that be solar, wind, uh, or bio forms of, uh, of energy. And we've created a program to help students if they want to concentrate in that area to, uh, to develop their skills in that as well. Uh, we will offer a, a webinar on these programs uh, uh, in the future. And I believe uh, Lisa already covered this. Did you cover this one as well? No, I didn't. OK, so let me quickly talk about this. Uh, this is just a quick summary of our distance program at a glance. Um, uh, clearly, Lehigh is a well-renowned university. That's very important when you go out and uh, seek employment, um, should you be looking for a job after, uh, after the program, is on your resume, you want to make sure that you've got a university that's well-recognized. Um, the, uh, the level of service that we have uh, is available to you through our on-campus services. Those, I don't think Lisa did talk about that, our uh, on-campus services that are available. I think an important point to really stress, it might be a question some of you have, is the diploma you get is exactly identical to the diploma that our on-campus students do. We have a hybrid program, and that means that you're actually participating in live classroom environments. You can participate live, or you can listen to the recorded content of the live class. But the distance program is not a trimmed down or different version of our, of our regular master's program. Uh, exams are necessary in the program, and uh, those are given through a proctored arrangement. We would help you find a proctor uh, at some place near your location where you'd actually be able to do that. But we do need to have some sort of certification uh, and, and manage the exam itself. Um, in terms of taking courses, um, you can take one or two courses a semester typically. It'll take you uh, probably three years to finish the program. When I did the program, it took me two and a half years. I did uh, the first year take one course, but after I realized I wanted to uh, speed up the program, um, I started taking two courses a semester. And remember, I was working full time at the time I was doing that. Uh, you have a total of six years to finish the program, so you don't have to finish it in three years. Life happens, um, um, you know, you're working or you have other uh, uh, life engagements. Um, you might need to take some time off, but you can, you can spread your time out to do that. And once again, Career Services is available to, uh, to help you as, you, uh, as you proceed, as well as me. These are some of the deadlines for the applications. So the fall applications are due at the beginning of July. The spring uh, semester applications are due at the beginning of April. And the summer semesters are due, uh, uh, applications are due uh, mid-April. Um, if you haven't already found the link, there's a link here that you can, uh, you can uh, open up to get access to how you apply for the program. If you want to talk to me before you actually fill out the applications material, I'd be happy to look at a tentative transcript and advise you on things that might make sense, not only from your existing academic background, but based on my experience um, working and my experience with employee development, I might be able to give you some advice uh, to help you think about career opportunities for yourself as well. And the, uh, the tuition is uh, $1,420 per credit hour. That's my contact information. It's also available on the website. Um, and uh, feel free to reach out to me. With that said, I think I'll take questions at this point. Yes, could you talk a little bit about research from a distance standpoint? You said in the presentation they could participate. Is there any research off-site with a mentor? How would that work? OK, so Lisa's asking the question. I'm not sure if you heard that. But uh, is that a question that came in online? Uh, earlier. Okay, yes. this is a question that came in earlier. Someone asked uh, what the research opportunities are uh, through this uh, through this master's program, and uh, what those capabilities are. So, uh, it, quite frankly, there are some, but very very limited research opportunities working on this degree. This is a master's of engineering degree. It's it's not a master's of science degree. The master's of engineering degree is based primarily on coursework, and the idea behind it, if you think about it, if you think about what a master's degree is. Um, I'm not going to make a play on the words. It's about mastering the topics that you learned in your undergraduate uh, uh, curriculum. So it's more in depth and more, uh, more uh, of a review and, uh, and making sure that you really understand the concepts that you took in undergraduate. So um, all of us took thermodynamics in undergraduate. Um, thermodynamics can be a very abstract uh, topic. One semester generally isn't enough time to really fully grasp all the, con all the concepts. And through the Master's of Engineering program, there's actually two thermodynamic courses you can take. One's required. And that gives you a chance to really master that. 
Uh, what the master's program allows you to do is focus on certain areas that might be of interest. Um, maybe you're interested in the energy area. You could still do a master's in chemical engineering and focus on energy, but then concentrate on that. So the nature of the master's program is really, especially the master's of engineering, isn't so much research. It's really mastering the fundamental um, uh, concepts and curriculum that was available to you in the undergraduate. Now with that said, should you be interested in doing some kind of research, why don't you uh, send, me a, send me an email and let's sit down and talk about it because um, everything is possible. But primarily the master's degree is about uh, education, uh, the courses. Okay. Lisa, are there other questions? Yes. Um, are online bridging courses offered? I come from a BS chemistry background. Okay, so that's a very good question. Someone just asked the question, what type of bridging courses do we offer if your undergraduate degree is not in chemical engineering? So first of all, let me say that if you want to do the master's in chemical engineering, um, you pretty much want to have a chemical engineering undergraduate degree. This is a master's on top of that degree. However, if you do have an exceptional background in something that is closely related, like chemistry, which is what the, uh, the question the student actually asked for their particular program, we do have one bridging course. And that bridging course uh, is kind of a crash course in thermodynamics, reaction engineering, and the transport processes. It's only one course uh, that we offer as the bridge. And the reason we do that is we found that in the past when we all, all offered multiple bridging courses, and as we've studied other universities that offer multiple bridging courses, quite frankly, it's to the students' disadvantage. The students spend most of their time just doing the bridging courses, and then it turns the program into a four or five year program for them. Um, and uh, uh, that's not the best outcome. Another option for, um, for students that might not um, have the, uh, the exceptional background or the degree in chemical engineering is considered the energy program. The energy program, it's not a toned down program, but it has a different focus that uh, there's less stress in some of the transport processes. So it's very easy to take the one bridging course that we do offer in thermo, reaction, and, uh, and transport processes, come up to speed, and then move into the, uh, into the energy program. If I did not answer the question the way that was specific to you, because everybody's case is different, send me an email, and, uh, and we can talk about your specific situation in, uh, in more detail. Lisa, do you have any other questions? We didn't talk about this. The GREs, not required for distance okay. ed? Okay. So the question came up, um, are the GREs or any other exams, I'll add, any other exams required for the master's program? Uh, the GREs are not required. The only exam that we do require is the TOEFL. Um, our programs are in English. It's an English-speaking university. Um, we need to make sure that, uh, um, that you can communicate and you'll be able to uh, uh, grasp the information in the English language. But no, the GREs or other uh, uh, graduate uh, tests are not required. Okay. We have a question. I am an undergrad double major in chemistry and forensic science. Do you have to perform exceptional in the bridging course to move on to the chemical engineering program? OK. So the, the question is, I, I, I'm currently, I currently have a background in chemistry and forensic science. Um, how well do I have to do in the bridging course? Do I have to, I think the question was, do I have to do exceptionally well in the bridging course uh, to move on? Uh, the answer is no, you don't have to do exceptionally well, but you do have to do well enough, okay? You do need to get a B or better in the bridging course to, uh, to really move on. Um, and once again, the reason we do this and the reason that uh, um, we also are very careful about um, not admitting uh, students that might not have the prerequisites is, believe me, at the end of the day, it's for your benefit. Um, you really don't want to get heavily involved in a program and then realize it really wasn't the right program for you, that, that you don't have a lot of the background. So the direct answer is no, you don't have to do exceptionally well, which I would consider to be an A, uh, but you do have to do well. You do have to understand the material and be able to grasp it, and that's, and that's a B um, or better. Nothing's come through yet. Do you want to ask one more time and just see if not? We okay, wrap it up. that's all the questions that uh, that have come through at this point. Does anybody have any other questions? I'll give you a chance to uh, to type something in if you do. Okay, well, you can always ask me a question by sending me an email, um, and if necessary, if you want to arrange a telephone conversation, we could do that as well. I'd like to thank all of you for your time. I know for some of you, it's bright and early in the morning. I appreciate you getting up early and attending this. For others, you're probably uh, deep into the night, and uh, um, I appreciate your uh, staying attentive and, uh, and taking that out of your time as well.